Hi, good morning to you all. Um, as Vipke said, I'm here to introduce an idea that a couple of friends from business school had a couple of years ago, and I'd like to start by painting a rough picture. Imagine Switzerland, October, around 6 a.m., temperatures pretty freezing. A group of students are standing in front of their conference location. We had worked an entire year to invite a lot of guests to come and talk about sport. And for the first time, standing there, bags under our eyes, coffee, for the first time since starting this project, it hit us. Will anyone actually show up to this student conference? This is what the location looked like a little bit later that day. We had been going to business schools for multiple years. We had learned a lot about theory. We had learned a lot of different skills that would help us maybe later in life. But on the other hand side, we had a great passion for sport. We were practicing it. We were watching it. But we also had an interest in what was going on behind the scenes, what was going on in the industry. And we wanted to build a connection for us, but also for other students between the sports business and the next generation of young minds. To connect generations, this was the idea why we started to initiate our conference. If you look at the sports industry today, if you look at what we're trying to sort of discuss at our event, it's very much a paradox. It is something that has its own section in nearly every newspaper. But on the other hand side, decisions like where the next World Cup is going to be held, who sort of sponsors these type of events, they feel like they happen behind closed doors, right? And they feel like the public who enjoys these events does not really have an influence on them. Ultimately, this of course leads back to the question that we try to answer for ourselves every day. What is sport? Is it only about the emotions, about the passions, clear eyes, full heart, can't lose? Or is it also about the business? If you think about it, it is a big income source for a lot of people and there's a lot of money to be made. For us as business students, we like the sport, right? We like to practice, watch and get angry about it. But on the other hand side, we kind of like the business as well. And what I've found is that generally when you ask the question, well, what is sport? Two different kinds of schools of thoughts emerge. First, it should be a public good accessible to everyone. It should be transparent and it should also be regulated by public authorities. But then the professional industry comes in and says, well, no, we can make a lot of money in this. It should be like any other economy, like any other market, should be sort of um, very efficient. And these two schools of thoughts, when they clash, they kind of create a little bit of a paradox, right? Is it about the money? Is it about the sport? And with this idea in mind, we decided if we want to break into this industry, if we want to make waves in that, if we want to use all the skills that we had learned in business school, we sort of need to invite the people that are currently taking the decisions to a discussion, which is why our idea was a couple of years ago, okay, hey, we're a university, let's invite the experts, the decision makers, to challenge their thoughts and to ask ourselves, hey, do we want to end up in this industry and where should we end up? We invited people from different institutions, the corporates sponsoring these type of events, the leagues, athletes, but we paired them, not only with our own questions, because at the end we're just a bunch of students, we paired them with the young minds that we invite from all over the world in different stages of their academic careers to challenge them, because we sort of wanted a little bit of a backup. If I give you a couple of stats, I think it becomes a little bit clearer. First, let's look at internationality. We have invited so far people from four different con con continents, from 20 different countries. If you look at age, quite a widespread, um, our youngest participant was 18 years old, and our oldest participant at the conference was around 75 years of age. If you look at characters, who would you think of? Probably this guy, right? The president of the German Football Association, who we of course invited. We also had our Olympic silver medalist 
talking about their experience in the sport. But it is about featuring all the different sides of the table. So we had the personal trainer of one of Germany's most successful athletes at our conference. We have the financial investors that own the clubs, leagues, and kind of fund the whole party. But we also try to incorporate the public side. And uh, for that, we have the director of the Federal Office of Sports of Switzerland, because in Switzerland, that's its own office. And um, if you take all these people and put them in the room together with, of course, all the students, it can look something like this. And what we found out is all we basically have to do is put both sides in a room, and they're going to start talking anyways, because they're interested. They're interested in learning from each other, and they're interested in sort of being challenged and also, of course, challenge their own worldviews. What our conference or our idea was about is give them a safe space to discuss, of course, the big paradox, but also maybe a little bit more the tangible sub-questions, and do that on eye level between the different parties. How did we achieve this? Well, we said, if you want to join, there are a couple of rules. First, if you sort of join as an expert and you want to talk about your ideas and your visions for the future, you're going to have to let students challenge you on the same session. So if you want to hold a talk, then you need to be open for anyone in the audience to ask you a question, and you have to, uh, you have to answer it on the spot. Secondly, what we mean by safe space or safe haven is the idea that no photos or sort of any phones are allowed. This gives participants the opportunity to sort of really share what they think about. And a point that is connected to that is that, contrary to maybe what a conference is in your head, we don't invite any media to the workshops. And I remember quite distinctly from one of the conversations, one of the experts came to the conference and looked around and kind of went like this. Oh, it's amazing. I can talk and I don't have to think twice about every word I say. This is what we want to achieve. The dialogue is the most important part. Let me take you back to 6 a.m., to the situation. We were standing in front of there, we were tired, and uh, we were wondering, well, is anyone actually going to find this place? Did we even communicate the location? Or, um, but sooner or later, the people started showing up, and they started to become interested in the program that we had set out for them sessions started to happen. And in one of the first sessions, there was a clash in opinion, quite vividly. It was actually about the definition of sport. And one of these sort of laid-back managers um, kind of springs up out of his chair in the middle of the conversation. It's like this. Springs up, raises his voice, and said, full stop. And then sort of continued his side of the story. Normally, right, these, you would expect these experts to be quite calm and calculated, but our setup was able to ignite the passion that he had for this industry in sort of himself. And we were able to, or a young mind was able to challenge him to the point where he put all of his cards on the table. And if both sides put all their cards on the table and you kind of sit them at the same table, this is when you sort of get this intergenerational discussion. Raw thoughts of young minds clashing with the experience and the decision makers saying, well, we've been doing that like that for the last 10 years. Why should it be different? This is the dialogue that creates change. And let me give you another example. We had planned a workshop prior to lunch on the conference. The stu a student was supposed to hold a little conversation. We thought, okay, light conversation, student holding it, easy round, perfect. And then everyone can go to lunch because they're hungry. Well, the conversation started getting intense and it started getting to the point where ideas had to be written down. But, well, we were a student conference and that did not fit our concept. And there was no paper, flip charts, boards or anything inside to write ideas down. But it didn't matter. Somehow, the participants, without our help, were able to find a piece of paper. And they just sat down on the floor, kneeling on the floor, experts, students, together, writing down these ideas. And I'd like to show you a picture of that now, but I said there are no pictures. This whole conference swings by in the blink of an eye. Just like that, you're standing at the after party, you have a couple of 
good, good nights of sleep afterwards, but you take in all the positive gratitude, but then you're kind of left feeling empty and you kind of have the, the question, will anyone show up was answered, but now the question is, well, that's it? That's all of it? Well, for me, that empty feeling is what sort of creates the passion to do another year, to get up the next day and say, okay, let's organize the next year. I want to create more change. I want to create more dialogue between generations because this is what drives an industry forward. This is what defines the future of, of an industry. And I want to be standing there the next day or in the next year, 6 a.m. in the morning, with maybe a little bit better weather, but I want to be standing there with the same thing again. Will anyone actually show up? Thank you. <laughs>